He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to worship this day as we celebrate uh, Easter together, whether you are here in the sanctuary or whether you are joining with us in and through our live stream. Happy Easter to you. Hopefully you had an opportunity to, uh, to wish somebody nearby a uh, happy Easter as we, uh, as we do gather, uh, gather for worship. If you are visiting with us, whether here in the sanctuary or online, uh, welcome, a very special welcome to you uh, this day. And if you uh, do not have a church home, a regular church home, we invite you to, uh, to, to ask questions, to, uh, to, to seek those answers, and perhaps uh, uh, be with us uh, all the time. But a uh, special welcome uh, to you uh, in, the, in the aisle, in the pew, you'll find a... Uh, card and that opportunity for you to uh, uh, find out a little bit more about the church. Perhaps uh, you have a uh, prayer need, a prayer concern, a question. Uh, you can simply fill it out. You can put it in the offering plate or there is a box back in the, uh, the narthex, the uh, lobby area. Uh, just if you have any questions or thoughts or concerns about uh, God's church here in this place. Somewhere in your bulletin, you'll find an insert, and uh, we remember uh, and we celebrate uh, the many as we uh, see the, uh, the Easter lilies before us uh, adorning the sanctuary this day. Uh, just a, uh, a note about those that you would uh, uh, find those uh, and read, read about those names that, uh, that we remember uh, today. There's a lot going on in the life of the church, so would encourage you to uh, look at the calendar, uh, to uh, invite others to be a part of uh, what's happening in God's church uh, here in this place. Now, if you would, just take a moment, uh, if you're able, and to stand and to, uh, to greet somebody around you, perhaps with that Easter greeting.
Yesterday we thought death had won. Yesterday we thought all was lost. Yesterday we thought Christ was gone. But not today. Today we know that love has won. Today we know that hope is real. Today we know that Christ is here. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Christ is risen today. O oh God, who was, is, and evermore shall be, to you belong all praise and glory. Angels in heaven announce the dawn of your eternal order. Trumpets herald Christ's victory as the stone is rolled away. Our mouths are opened to proclaim your mercies. We lift up our hearts to you, our judge and redeemer. We find ourselves at place of confession. So hear these words. In the Gospel of Luke, the woman came to the tomb. And to their surprise, instead of finding Jesus, they find angels. The angels tell the women, Jesus is not here. And when that answer is met with confusion, the angels say, remember what he told you. 
Remember, it is one of the words Jesus used at his last supper. And it's one of the first words we hear at the empty tomb. Remember. I think this call to remember is why we need the prayer of confession. And these words of forgiveness every single week. It's not enough to hear of God's grace once. We need to hear it over and over again, week after week. We need to be reminded that God's grace and mercy will never run out. So friends, let us run to God like the women ran to the tomb. Let us tell the truth of our lives so that once again we can be reminded that our God is a God of grace, mercy, and love. Let us pray so that we can remember. Join me in the prayer of confession. It is responsive. The stone is rolled away. The angels say, he is not here. The women tell the story. Peter runs to the tomb. Forgive us, God. For thinking an empty tomb is nothing more than a prank. Forgive us for pushing away reasons to hope when you are alive and well in the world. Unravel the threads of our unbelief. The angels tell the women, remember what Jesus told you. So church, remember this. You are seen. You are forgiven. You are held in God's grace. All of this is true. Grace and mercy abound for you. Remember this. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. And let us stand, those who are able, and sing our praise. May weep through the longest nights. We may stare at the empty tomb with more questions than answers. We may run our fingers over the burial cloths and still long for more. But today we are a people of hope. We believe in new beginnings. We believe that the God who created the world is stronger than death. We believe that Jesus abides among us, healing, teaching, and leaving fingerprints throughout this world. We believe that a tomb could not hold him. We believe that the sun does rise. We believe that Peter was there with questions, awe, and faith the size of a mustard seed. We believe that the story is not over yet. Today is among us. Today we are a people of hope.
I'd like to invite the, uh, the, the children, our young disciples, to uh, join me here at the, uh, the chancel steps. Well, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah. You know, one of the fun things that we do at Easter, what's one fun thing that we do uh, around Easter? Collect eggs. Collect eggs. Hunt eggs, huh? And, and a lot of you did that yesterday, right? We gathered here and we had a little celebration but I'm missing one egg. I'm missing one egg. And I think it's over that way. I think it's over near where Pax is sitting. It's probably within arm's reach from you, Pax. Don't move. Just reach as far as you can reach and see if you can find the one egg. I think I got a glimpse of it earlier today. Try your left arm. Reach your left arm as far as it'll go. No, nah, yeah, reach out in front of you. Maybe look under the Bible. Nobody ever looks there. <laughs> Your left arm. <laughs> no? Yeah. Anywhere? Right there? Yeah. Find it? Find it? Here, I'm going to come get it. <laughs> I found it. I found it. I think we, when we were telling our story yesterday, we forgot this one egg. This is an egg. And what do you think's in it? Candy. candy. No, I think we, no, I think we, we distributed all of the candy. What's in it? Hmm. There's a cross in it. Huh? There's a cross. We didn't talk about the cross yesterday at our egg hunt, did we? But we're going to talk about it this morning. What's on the cross? Nothing. It's empty. What's in the egg now? Nothing. It's empty. It's empty. Hmm. Why is it empty? Why is that empty? Why is that important for us to remember? If it's empty, it's because... I heard a couple answers. I hear them coming. It's because whenever... Um, the fourth day when people came to the tomb. Got it. Um, third, third day, third day, third day. Um, the third day, third day. On the third day. Third day, there you go, third day. I meant um, when the disciples came. Yep, yep. To the, in the tomb, Jesus wasn't there. He wasn't there, good. And I heard that same answer over here. The tomb was empty, right? Why was it empty? Because Jesus, he rose from the, from the dead. And why did all that happen? It's a long story, right? It's a long story to help us remember, that's a big word today, remember that God loved us so much that God sent his only son into the world and that whoever believes in him would not perish 
would not die, but would have everlasting life. God's love. It's a reminder for us. And right behind us, Mackenzie, will you reach and grab that basket right there? I've got a few things. Hopefully I have enough. If not, you all can share. I'm going to give you a butterfly. Okay? Does that sound exciting? Why am I going to give you a butterfly? I'm excited for the butterfly. Why a butterfly? Come on. Because Why a butterfly? Spring. It's springy, right? Yep. It's springtime. Mm -hmm. And you can also see them at Easter. What does a butterfly do? A butterfly reminds us of what? Reminds us, again, of new, exactly, of new beginnings, of new life. So hopefully we'll remember that, not just today, but every day that the cross is empty, that the tomb is empty because he, Jesus, he is do you all want to say something? I'm going to have you say, he is risen. And watch what happens, okay? You're going to say together, you're going to say, he is risen, okay? Just like that, he is risen. Ready? You all say that, ready? He, he is, is risen. risen. He is risen indeed. Say that again. He, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Go ahead, let's pray. God, thank you for loving us so much. Help us to remember that when things are rough, when things are tough, help us to remember that you love us just the way we are. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys can go that way or back. Butterfly, a monarch, or it, could, or it could be one that is designed like a monarch, but it isn't to to um to scare predators off uh, because predators know idea. from a bright idea. colors. Hey, we gotta keep going. From we'll talk about it later. From Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. God gives us uh, gifts. God gives us abilities to use. Uh, in and through his, his church here and uh, in and through the church there. So uh, we'll receive the, the offering uh, of our lives, the, it, our, our gifts, the things that God has provided for us that we uh, give back. Let us present our lives and our gifts to God.
Let us pray. Dear God, hope is hard to find in our world. There are plenty of reasons to be cynical, to throw in the towel and accept that everything is doomed. But as we are reminded in the, uh, the outcry of a, of a young child, new life seems impossible. And yet we are reminded that hope doesn't die. Like those weeds that keep springing up, let hope rise within us like a child. Again and again and again. Help us believe in resurrection today and every day as we use the gifts that we present to you in and through your church here and there. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We enter into a season of prayer and we are reminded uh, of our needs, but also of the needs of, of others. So let us go to our God in prayer on this Easter day. God of tomorrow, God of today, God of the garden and of the tomb, God of our faith and our doubt, we are running toward you. Like Peter on that Easter morning, we simply cannot stay away. So with beating hearts and wide eyes, we have arrived in this sanctuary, bringing with us questions, hopes, joys, and concerns. Hear these prayers as we draw closer to you. God of the dawn, we start with our hopes. Thank you for the gifts of this world that instill buoyancy in us. Thank you for the curiosity of children, for the sound of your people singing in unison, for crowded tables and neighborly kindness, for the sun after the rain, the spring after the frost, love after loss, and faith after doubt. Like Peter, we have countless reasons to hold on to hope, Highest among them is the joy and promise of this day. However, before we found ourselves in the garden, before the joy and the alleluias of this day, we found ourselves at the foot of the cross. So for the things that erode our hope, for the things that stitch doubt and fear into our hearts, we ask for your comforting hand. Wrap your arms around all those who are still locked in that upper room. Wrap your arms around all who cannot find healing after their longest night. Wrap your arms around all who look for reasons to hope. Holy God, like Peter, fan the flames of our faith. Like Peter, invite us to step out of our boats. And like Peter... Use us to care for those in need, to tell your story, and to build a better world. We remember and we believe. So with awestruck, wildly beating, grateful hearts, we run toward you. With feet in the garden and eyes on the cross, we pray to you, saying the words your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Let us pray. God of new beginnings, on that first Easter morning, the disciples struggled to hear the good news. Doubt clouded their minds. Negativity took root and hope vanished with a simple shake of their heads. As we return to this familiar text, help us to hear differently this morning. Open our ears that we might hear the sound of alleluias ringing through this text. Open our minds that the mystery and joy of Easter might feel within reach. Open up our hearts that we might believe the unbelievable. And like Peter, in this hearing, may we move closer to you. God of the empty tomb, we are hungry for your good news. Speak to us now. With hope in our hearts, we listen and we pray. Amen. Gospel lesson, Luke 24, 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the son of man must be handed over to the hands of sinners and be crucified on the third day, rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with whom told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. With this do and remembrance of me. That word remember should be and hopefully will be etched in our, uh, in our minds as we go from this place this day. Remember, we have journeyed through the, the season together beginning on Ash Wednesday, we heard about Peter, one of Jesus' followers, one of those who were closest to, to him. Simon, Cephas, the rock, Petros, Simon Peter, the fishing partner with brother Andrew, and James and John, Peter, part of that inner circle, those who were closest to Jesus, we remembered together his life through the ups and through the downs, through the, through the mountaintops and, and, and the valleys, from the good things that, that Peter did, and oh, the not so good things that Peter did. Perhaps Peter's life is reflected uh, in Thomas Merton's prayer, My Lord God. I have no idea where I'm going, perhaps Peter said. 
I do not see the road ahead of me, and I can't not know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all things that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear. For you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. We find Peter, even this day, on this resurrection day, in a place of doubt. He is told by, by the women that the tomb is empty. Peter has to see it for himself. On this day, as we find in the text, an atmosphere of confusion, disturbance, and doubt. The followers of Jesus awaiting some confirmation of the reports that Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead. In Luke's, uh, Luke's gospel, in, in Luke's resurrection story, in Luke's resurrection narrative, we find that it is set up into uh, to four parts, four units, and I will say what these are. And the first one we're going to read this day, we have heard this day, the empty tomb, followed by the appearance on the road to Emmaus, an appearance in Jerusalem and blessing and departure in Luke, all the appearances, as a commentator writes, of the risen Christ are in or near Jerusalem. And they are told as occurrences on one day, the first day of the week. Perhaps they had been so framed for the church's observance of Easter, a possibility strongly supported by the context itself. Remember, remember this day. Hear these words once again as we find them in the message written by Eugene Peterson at the crack of dawn on Sunday. The women came to the tomb carrying the burial spices that they had pre prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of the Master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, it seemed two men, like over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. The men said, why are you looking for the living one in the cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners to be killed on a cross. And in three days, not four, they remembered Jesus' words. They left the tomb and they broke the news, all of this, to the eleven and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them kept telling these things to the apostles, but the apostles didn't believe a word of it. They thought they were making it up. But Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped and he looked in, and he saw a few grave cloths. That's all. 
He walked away puzzled, shaking his head. From that point on, their lives had changed again. They found nothing. Jesus was not there. But as the story continues, which you are encouraged to to be a part of that narrative, because we are part of that narrative, that continuing story that Jesus began to appear to them and they began to remember and to believe and to hold on to hope. It's something to to remember the things that we have learned. I had an opportunity last week to uh, spend a little bit of time on a mountain with a couple of my adult children and to watch them ski and snowboard as I attempted to keep up. It was gratifying. In the midst of not feeling well, of being out of shape, of realizing my limitations, to watch them do something to remember the things that I had taught them. To remember as they learned how to do those things and enjoy them. One of my other adult children was not able to to be with us as she is serving at a camp. And I remembered that much of what she is doing are the things that I taught her to do. Remember. A few weeks ago in worship, my my daughter Allison was, was with us in worship, and I watched her as you did. Perhaps not all that excited about it. But as I started to think about it, I found my daughter sitting in the choir loft. I found my daughter standing at the communion table waiting to extinguish the lights like an acolyte. As I was preaching, she was standing saying what I was saying. She wanted to be a part of the the children. She wanted to be a part of who you, you are. She simply was remembering the things that she had been taught. Remember, as we gather into this place, God's church here, we are called to remember all that that God has done, all of the the lessons that God has taught us in and through the voice, through the the action, by, by what we've said and by what we've done. We are called to remember to remember so that we might believe even stronger still that we might continue to share that lesson, that lesson of love, that lesson of hope with all who come into our path. So whether that's high on a mountain or or low in a valley, might we be reminded of God's amazing love that, yes, he came into the world not to condemn the world, but to save the world, to meet us right where we are and to help us to become who we were created to be. As we're reminded in these waters of baptism, we're reminded that the old life, the old life is gone It is washed away, and a new life, a new life begins time and time again. That's the good news. 
That's the good news of Easter, that Christ came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world, that's you, that's me, that's everyone, might have life. Friends, thanks be to God. Amen. In my house, it was a tad bit quiet this morning. Things were a bit different. Perhaps at your home, things were a bit different this year. But with that said, help us, Lord, to remember and let us remind one another to find ways to be inwardly song strong. Let us remember to be outwardly minded. Let us remember always to be upwardly focused and hear these words of benediction. Beloved wanderer, 
as you leave this place. May you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. You are called, you are blessed in both your ups and your downs. You always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting that good news. Amen and happy Easter. Thank you.